Hello, my name is John Goss. I'm the owner and artistic director of the Glenwood Vaudeville Review. It is, uh, we are going into our holiday season of 2017, our 25th Vaudeville show, and we are currently uh, in production of our second big musical, Little Shop of Horrors, hence the Mushnick Skid Row Flora sign directly below my feet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this video is being put together specifically to give you an in-depth look at one of my prized possessions that we introduced into the theater back in 2013 when we moved here into this old Springs movie theater and turned it into the vaudeville. This is a 1918 Wurlitzer photo player, which means next year, in just a couple of months, it's gonna be turning 100 years old. And I thought it would be a great way to introduce to you our Wurlitzer photo player, give you an in-depth look at all the wonderful things she can do uh, how she came alive. I, I'm constantly surprised at how curious and fascinated people are with this instrument. And I thought it would be a great way for those who are more interested to get a better look at how she works, what she does, and how she does it. So I hope you enjoy this video we put together for you today. Okay, now, for those of you who have been to our show, you've probably heard some of this information, but if you've not, or if you were too busy talking when I was talking about it, let me give you a little bit of a background behind this wonderful instrument. Now, photo players were specifically built for the old silent, classic silent movies back in the day. Now, when the movies first came out, they were actually first little movie books or books that had a whole bunch of photographs in them that they would play, you know, and you would see it move. You occasionally see some of that nowadays. Well, those were some of the very first motion pictures back in the day, and they were called a photo play. So the very first movies or motion pictures that came out were called photo play motion picture, a very common term back in the day. And of course they were silent, they had no way of recording anything onto all those pictures, so they had to build a very specific instrument to put into the movie theaters when they showed those classic silent movies to provide all the sound effects and all the music underneath all the wonderful stuff they were visually watching on the big screen. Now since the movies back then were called a photo play motion picture, well the instrument providing all the sound effects and music was then called a photo player. And back in the day there were thousands of instruments built like this put into movie theaters all around the country. And then something called the talkies came out in the early 30s. Now then when the talkies came out they realized everything could be recorded right onto the film and that was the future of movies. And then all of a sudden photo players were not being built anymore. They were non-existent. They would disappear. They'd go into private collections and museums. And there are probably fewer than a dozen that are still in good operating condition today. They're still in the country. Most of them in museums. Some are in private collections. I'm extremely fortunate to have one of these instruments. They are very different than orchestrians, than piano player, player pianos. Uh, there are calliopes, all kinds of different instruments from back in the days, but only photo players had the unique ability to play at will all the different sound effects they used back in the movies back then. All right, now we're going to get to all the details of all the different sound effects and stuff, but what I'd love to do first is just give you a great idea of what these fantastic instruments can do. And we're going to play a song for you in a second. But what's most important is that you also understand is what the underlying engine or the main power core behind these photo players back in the day. It's air. Back then you would just push air through this thing and air would be controlled and manipulated in ways that, you, that is just not done nowadays. Back then they would push air and it would create all these different vacuums and whatnot. And when you push certain buttons or did certain things, that air would go in different directions and it would just make everything work. It was a brilliant, brilliant uh, engineering back in the day. But all that air has to come from somewhere. So in the back room, there's a pump, a very powerful pump that pushes air through the tubes and gives it everything it needs. It's got a big regulator in the back. So when I turn the instrument on, that's what you're gonna hear is all that air being shoved through different places, coming out the regulator in the back and being pushed to places. Then when I push the buttons and make all the sounds, that's where that air is going and that's what makes it all happen is all the pressurized air within this instrument. Okay, so I'm gonna play a classic song called Five Foot Two Eyes of Blue on this girl, and it's on a piano roll. So I'm not actually playing all the piano keys. I will be pushing all the buttons that make everybody smile and make all the wonderful noises and sounds you're about to hear in just a second. So here's the pump that sounds like when you turn the instrument on. Hear all that air going on? Exactly, going all over the place. Now I'm gonna play for you Five Foot Two Eyes of Blue on a 1918, 99 year old Wurlitzer photo player. Enjoy. Here you go. 
Oh yeah! Look out, baby! <laughs> five foot two, eyes of blue. Oh, what those five foot could do? Has anybody seen my gal? Yeah, turned up nose, turned down hose. Never had no other bows. Has anybody seen my gal? Now if you run into a five foot two, covered with fur, five and rings, and all those things you can bet your life, it isn't her, but could she love? Could she coo? Oh, could she, could she, could she coo? Has anybody seen my gal? Five foot two, eyes are blue. Oh, what those five foot two do? Has anybody seen my gal? Turned up nose, turned down hose. Never had no other bows. Has anybody seen my gal? Now if you run into a five foot two covered with fur, diamond rings, and all those things you can bet your life it isn't her, but could she love? Could she do? Could she, could she, could she do? Has anybody seen my girl? Here we go! Love that. All right, now the feet. Now if you run into five foot two, covered with fur, diamond rings, and all those things you can bet your life, it isn't her, but could she love? Could she do? Could she, could she, could she, could she, could she anybody see my gal? Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> all right. So now you heard the instrument in its full form with uh, uh, five foot two eyes of blue. So now let's get into more of the details and specific, specifics of this instrument that a lot of people would like to see that you can't see from down there. Now, um, first of all, this is like a giant player piano. The concept is it plays piano, player piano rolls that play automatically all the keys because I'm not a piano player. But if there is well, a good strong piano player can play the piano and it would play a lot of the pipes and stuff that we're about to show you here in just a second. But these come on a little bit tighter. These are the piano rolls. This is five foot two eyes of blue and just like a good old player piano, these are all the different holes that make all the different notes and stuff play here. And uh, there are actually two different rolls that you could put on. And they are regular 88 key rolls of the majority of uh, player piano rolls back in the days. There's thousands of different songs. And it plays the very common piano rolls. And I've got quite a few in the back to choose from. So now you know that. Let's go into the details of some of the wonderful sound effects that make photo players photo players. And so wonderfully unique. Now, we're going to probably actually come up a little bit. And I'm going to show you this is a school bell that we added because it's just so much fun. It's very loud. And uh, you'll hear that a lot down there when we play the song. And we come over to the side, we've got a train whistle, and we've also added. And those are just uh, non-pipe, they, they don't have any other power to them except just by playing them. Now everything else is done with all the energy from the air that's being pushed through. So I'm going to turn the instrument back on, which we're going to do right there. So, now it's got all the energy it needs, and we go through all the other sound effects that were used back in the day. And let me go through all these wonderful buttons down there. Now this is another type of uh, telephone bell or school bell. That button right there. This is the bird call, one of my favorites. One of my favorite little bird call over there, isn't that great? We got the snare drum right here. This is the bass drum button. Yeah, this is the castanets, <laughs> tambourine. Just all, look how wonderful that is. This is all 100 years old, like I said. Now here's the uh, wonderful klaxon or the auga horn we all know. That guy right there, move that out of the way. And then we've got some more buttons. We got the uh, fire bell right there, fire bell. And then we've got the, the uh, uh, police whistle, of course. The old boat whistle. And then the horses. This is the wagon. Back horses back in those days, there were a whole bunch of those. There we go, you just push it and it works. Isn't that great? Now we're gonna go down to the foot pedals down below that can also be done all at the same time. And we're just gonna start with this one here. And that's the wood block. And we got the triangle. This is the uh, cymbal and the uh, gong. In the back, we'll show you that in a little bit. And these are regular piano, piano pedals for those who know how to play piano well. And then the bass drum, snare drum, oh, excuse me, the tom-tom, 
the snare drum, and then the roll snare. This is fun. It just plays consistently like that, right? Great. And then the old siren. And so you can do them all at the same time. For example, cymbal, bass drum, and then up above I play the snare drum. So those are four different things happening. And then if you put a bunch of them together and play them all at different times, you get different whistles. So you go. That gives you an example of all the things. How many, how many fingers and how many things you push at the same time, you get a lot of different sound. So we hope you enjoyed learning about those. Now, we're going to get into all the details within the actual machine itself. All right, so we'll be back in just a second. Okay, now let's take a look inside the instrument itself. Now, as you know, we've got the main piece in the center that does all the playing, the keyboards, we'll get to all that in a second. But right now, this is the right case. So if you're looking up from the audience, it's the one on the right side. And I'm going to give you a quick look inside. This one's the easy one. So here's the case that was made for it 100 years ago. Here's the inside of it. So we just kind of take a, that off there. And these are all the lower pipes. This is the easy case. The really deepest pipe is this one right here, and they get smaller and smaller. So these are all the organ wood pipes. These are all 100 years old, like I said. And if we come up above here and take a look from the top, it gives you just another angle of how all the pipes all fit in here. And the longer the pipe, the deeper the sound, and the smaller the pipe, of course, the higher the sound. And they have different ways to tune it, and it goes out of tune all the time. So that's our case on the right. So now we're going to go take a look at the case on the left. Okay. And now we're going to show you the case on the left. Okay, so again, there's our main piano here. This is the big case on the left here. And it's got all the fancy doodads and stuff, and it's got a lot more intricacy to it. So let me take this off here, and we'll take a close look inside our case on the left. Now these are all the smaller pipes. There's a whole bunch of them down in here. And there's the, the, the string, quote, the string pipes, and then there's the uh, woodwind pipes that sound a little bit different. Here's the tiniest, tiniest little pipe right there, and it just blows air. <whistles> it's our tiny pipe. That's the very highest one. And again, it's all driven on air. They all come out, and here's one of the bigger ones. Isn't that fun? And those are the pipes. Now behind that, there's all kinds of controls and more. This is a big... Uh, an air processor that pushes all the air through everything back in there. There's some bells here, and the bells aren't working. I've been trying to get them to work for a while, but it takes somebody much more specialized than I to figure out where my leak and problem is for that. I'm trying to get that fixed, and that will get fixed sometime soon. But up above it, this is where all the sound effects are. This is the really cool stuff that makes photo players so much fun, so different, so unique, and so obnoxious. They're just great. We got the, the tom tom and the snare drum, the cymbal, little cymbal, the clack and all that from underneath, all kinds of things, the triangle and bells. So now we're going to look at it from the top and give you another kind of example as you look up at the top up here. Of course, you're passing the... That was our train whistle right there by hand. But all this stuff, again, is driven on air, and it's all by those buttons we talked about earlier. we got the, uh, the snare drum, again, the cymbal, just hit that right there. Here's the klaxon, goes auga. Here's the, the wood block and the horses. There we go, the horse is right there, and then we've got, there's another bell, and there's the tambourine, and here's a horn, and a school bell, and all kinds of stuff. That's all controlled, again, from the buttons down there. And that's where this is all cased right here. Okay, so now you know what's happening in the left case. Now we're going to go to the centerpiece. All right, now here is the center case, and we've already seen this quite a few times. Here's the keys, just like you've seen many times, but now we've taken the top piece off, and so we can see the inner workings of this. Again, remember, everything's about 100 years old. Very few things have been actually replaced on it. Now on the back is just regular piano, like any other piano, but it's like a player piano, so it has literally hundreds if not a thousand different tubes. All these tubes have been replaced. Most of them are underneath there. It's so unbelievably complex. All these different things have so many subtle little things that I don't use the photo player much for anything. I really use it just to be loud and obnoxious and fun and make people smile. So a lot of subtle stuff isn't used much anymore. These pieces right here are basically used to control how the uh, rolls fit on with the, with the holes here to make the music sound right and correct. And they can be very tricky. And most of the time it works great and every now and then it gets a little cattywankus. And on this side 
uh, is, is all the mechanism. These are all little bellows that, that, that go back and forth to get the power to turn all this around and keep everything right in alignment. And I'm actually going to turn it on here in a second and rewind this and play a little bit. You can kind of see how it works. Now, you got to remember each one of these is a note if you don't know much about player pianos. And it rolls across the front of this bar, this brass bar right here that has holes in it. And then those holes draw air through. And when it draws air through, it pushes a trigger that makes a sound. And these couplings here, uh, are, are the couplings that tell that sound whether it's going to come out this pipe or that pipe or a couple of different things I'm going to show you in just a second. So uh, let me go ahead and turn the air back on. There you go. That's all right. Come on, Tyler. Uh, air's on. Now it's really noisy up here, I know. But now let me go ahead and turn on the actual roll mechanism. You can see all this stuff go. It's pretty cool. But I turn the pipes off now so you can hear it a little better. That's just a piano. Still the sound effects, all still over. Okay, and I'm going to rewind this a little bit. So that rewinds the roll. That's all this working right in here. It all controls all this. And I'm going to stop it. And we're going to play the beginning and see how the beginning of the song goes. Now we add it all together. Kind of fun. Going forward, and now here's how the song starts. We control the tempo on it too. We'll learn a lot goes by the foot they'll do. And then we we'll pick it up. Turn up those, turn down those, never had no other bones. All the pipes will come on, you won't hear me anymore. Here we go. There we go. Noisy. Okay. So, there you go. It gives you better feel now of the inner workings and how it works. Now, to be very honest, this girl came in in pretty good shape. I had somebody spend, I spent a lot of money on her when we brought her in from uh, Washington. And it was in pretty much really good shape and had a lot of power and juice and stuff because I added some other wonderful things that came with it. I've got to show you those here in just a second. So we're going to take a cut. I'm going to show you what else we've done with this that is not working right now because I need to get this girl and all the air and stuff working better and figure out how to do that. So here's some of the extra added specialties about the photo player I haven't been able to use because I've lost a lot of the power and... Uh, the power again comes from the air, whether that's from the vacuum or from the air pressure going through. I haven't been able to figure it out because I just don't specialize in this kind of a thing. But I'm working on that and I'll get to that in just a minute. But this is one aspect of it. These are some chimes. And each one of these chimes has been hooked up to the individual notes that are played and I can bring that up. Problem is, and this is the pipe and the air that comes from the main vac or the main uh, air pressure pump in the back room goes through all this, but I've had to cut it off because I can't run everything at the same time at this moment. It has in the past and it will again, but I can't at the moment. Let me show you real quick the drums uh, that we are able to use right now, which is great. So we got this big bass drum, and that's what you hear when I push the pedal. There's the big uh, crash cymbal in the back over there. And again, these are all pipes that go uh, the different air, the different pressure, and the different power to each one of these individual units. Okay, and now we're gonna go over and look at one last cool thing that I'm gonna show you. All right, now here's the last thing I wanna show you. This is the xylophone. And again, when I first got the whole instrument in here four years ago, uh, she was up, she was in pretty good shape and um, the xylophone came with it. I finally got a really great home for it over here and used it for about five or six months and showed that off. And the whole, again, the whole thing is a full set of xylophones. It's so neat, the sound that comes from it's fantastic. But what's happening now is that the girl isn't able to get enough air through and hold that air and being 100 years old, coming to Colorado in a much drier climate, a lot of that wood has shrunk and changed and I can't figure out exactly where the problem is and I have a specialist who lives in Colorado Springs and I've got some, there's only a handful of people in the world that know how to work on these anymore and they're getting up there in age, there's no doubt about it. So I'm trying to get one of them out here to fix this girl and get her back to a really good operating condition so I can use the xylophone, I can use the chimes, I can use the bells and get her working to full capacity. So um, part of this video is to get people passionate, hope people can be passionate about this to help me. I have a sponsorship set up. There's a wonderful, I'm going to show this, the last thing I'm going to show is a wonderful 
uh, a board out here that we put sponsors and names up of folks that are helpers for the photo player that can help sponsor the photo player and keep her going strong. And I'm hoping to bring somebody out here. It's going to cost a couple thousand dollars at least. Have them come out, fix her up, get her in great condition, and hopefully I can keep her there for a long time. So uh, I'd like to show you that final plaque. And now you've seen uh, pretty much everything about the photo player. And I hope you've enjoyed this uh, because I'm passionate about it and I'm always surprised and pleased with how many young people, a lot of men, mostly men, a lot of young people that are really curious and love this girl. And they're like, wow, that's just so much fun. And it's, I'm glad it's part of our show. And you've seen our shows. We write original pieces for it. And we bring it to life every single night a couple of times. So we hope you've enjoyed this video, learning about our 100 year old 1918 Wurlitzer photo player and for her 100th big birthday coming up we hope that we can give her a big makeover with some help from our friends and get her sounding as good as uh, as good as we possibly can. So as I mentioned earlier uh, this is our plaque we've had up here since 2013 when we moved here into the new building and these are all of our original sponsors to help us get things going. I greatly appreciate all these folks that have helped us in the past and all these down here are specific sponsors for the photo player. Uh, that we've just been talking about. And uh, to start up with the, the Meitler family, uh, Colorado HVAC was one of our, our initial sponsors for the photo player, along with Klaus Coker, Black and White Photography, and Half and Rosario Young. And as you probably noticed, there are quite a few empty plaques here. We haven't really been pushing that very much, but now that the girl needs some extra help and we gotta get somebody in there who really knows what they're doing better than I do, uh, we'd love to put some more names on there. And we're looking for sponsorships anywhere from $500 to $1,000. If you feel comfortable and would like to join, put your name up here and be a part of keeping that girl strong and healthy. We greatly appreciate it here at the Vaudeville, and we hope you enjoy this little video learning all about our 100-year-old photo play. Thank you.